The following is a conversation with Silviu Glodanu. Silviu is from Romania and is a part of Hoyman's Pigeons in the Netherlands. Silviu goes into his history in Romania and his role with Hoyman's Pigeons. I appreciate Silviu's time. I think you're really going to enjoy this episode. Thank you. All right, Silvio Glodano, how are you today? Hello, hello, guys. I'm uh, I'm very good. Thank you for uh, for this opportunity. So you're originally from Romania. You are a part of Team Hoymans, and uh, yes. let's start at the beginning for you. You and I got to meet first of all. We got to meet in 2022 at, at Hoymans there in the Netherlands, and uh, got to talk to you and get to know you a little bit. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, let's start out with. Uh, Romania is uh, where where did you start with pigeons? Well, uh, I started with pigeons as a as a as a young boy. Uh it was uh I think 1994, 1995. And uh I found a pigeon somewhere in the street and um I was uh, keeping him at my uh, grandparents. And after that, an uncle of mine gave me another one, I make a pair. And easy the the number keep was growing, you know. Yeah, uh, I had some uh, in my family some uh, connections with pigeons. My father and his brother were were uh, pigeon fanciers. So that another uncles of mine also uh, pigeon fanciers. Uh, in my in my village, uh, pigeon sport is uh, very popular. So um, a lot of um, of uh, young kids as my as my age, we were uh, with pigeons every day. You know. So well, it was quite easy to to get uh, you know uh, into this. Yeah, and uh, things started growing. You know, every day with pigeons, pigeons, pigeons. I was uh, at my grandparents in the beginning uh, for the first, I think, five six years, and after uh, after that, I, my father allowed me to make a loft um, in the backyard. So was your was your dad waiting to see if you were serious and if you really wanted to do it? Yeah, I think he was uh, expecting to to be focused on school first, you know, and mm-hmm. after that pigeon. But uh, it's okay now. He's uh, he's also very very involved in this uh, sport and everything. You know, his uh, everyday uh, routine involves a lot of work by the pigeons now. Yeah. So, do you all partner uh, in Romania when you're there? Sorry. Do you guys partner? Do you race together in Romania? When uh, yeah, yeah. Going? He was help. He was helping me a lot, of course, especially for the short and middle distance. What I was playing there. Um, you must be very, very focused on uh, on uh, what you do every day. Be very, very careful about all the details. So, yes, he was uh, helping me a lot. So uh, by training, by uh, mm-hmm. uh, by car, of course. The one was uh, taking the pigeons. The other one was uh, waiting for them, separating, and uh, yeah, training around the loft. Everything we try to do it together as a team. So once he knew that you were ready to take pigeons seriously, <laughs> you built a loft and near his. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you, I think you told me already, but you guys kind of specialize in the sprint and, and middle distance. Yeah, I, I like the short distance and middle distance. I prefer to be, you know, uh, I don't like to wait that much for the long distance. Or right, right. To take the long distance. So I was uh, focused on the races from 100 to 500 kilometers. Right. And so... That's, that's what my- what age were you whenever you built this loft next to your dad and he started teaching you? Do you remember? Uh, 2000. So I was around about 15 years old. Something yeah. like that. So mm-hmm. at that point, you knew that you wanted to do it and, and go and, and have your own team and, and fly, or were you guys flying the same team of birds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he helped me, of course, to, to buy my first... Uh, my first uh, flock, you know. I said, yeah. So you did and, you? Yeah, you competed against each other then. No, no, no. My father was not a pigeon fancy. Okay, okay. We played together with his brother. 
I got it. And when he joined the army, he stops. Okay. I see. But the passion was still there. Yeah. That's why he me, he allowed me to 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 have pigeons uh, back. So you built the loft there with him, and he kind of t taught you, and you guys raced together on the on the short and middle distance. I get it. I'm with. You. Yeah, something like that. And so when uh, when did you start to uh, were you successful right away? Did it take some time before you started kind of winning, or what? What's the story there with how you began racing? In the beginning, it was hard. It was hard at the beginning with uh, pigeons, quality pigeons, of course. Um, but in 2004, I, in 2003, I had the chance to work with pigeons in Greece. Maybe Greece is not uh, very popular with the pigeon sport. There are not so many ventures there. But I worked for a guy there, Nikos, uh, and I learned a lot from, from him. Um, about the, the, the widowhood, about the, the food about the training, the system, about everything. And that helps me a lot. I worked there for three seasons. And uh, after that, I was coming back home. And uh, from 2006 to 2013, I think, seven years, I was working uh, in Bucharest, also for a pigeon man. And we did a, I, I did a great job. We, we won a lot of uh, prizes at national level, provincial level, everything. And after that, from 2013, uh, I was uh, coming back home and race again at my at my loft. And uh, yeah, until 2019. From 2010, I was uh, traveling about two times per year in uh, Belgium, Holland, you know, after pigeons, after yeah, talking with the uh, fan shares and everything like this. Um, and uh, I had a lot of connections there. I was very young, but people like me, I don't know. And uh, I was in good contact with uh, Ars Karlakens. I think you heard about him. Mm -hmm. It's a popular name. Yeah. And uh, he asked me in 2018, if I would like to to come in Belgium to work for uh, pigeons, yeah. And uh, to tell you honest, back home in Romania, I was winning almost everything for short and middle distance. I had nothing to prove, and I said, "Okay, let's try something." And, uh, I was coming in 2019 to work for a guy in Belgium. Uh, he was a long distance player. We didn't have a very good connection, and uh, uh, yeah, I stopped. I was preparing to co to go back home, and uh, meanwhile, Jan come come in the uh, on the line, and uh, we start talking, and uh, we find a way, and he convinced me to to join the team, the team Hoymans, and I'm here ever since. Well, that's our agreement. Yeah, yeah our agreement is to work uh, nine nine months per year here, from February to October to November. Uh, so before the season and after the season, I'm I'm going home for three months. Yeah, before we move into Team Hoymans and how you started there, let's go back to Romania when you're racing the short and middle distance there. Tell people because you know uh, the Romania racing pigeons isn't is. Uh, People don't know as much about it. How many people are you flying against? Uh, how many, uh, you know, how many races yeah. are you flying? And, and young birds, old birds, tell, teach us about Romanian racing. Yeah, in Romania, uh, pigeon sport is very attractive now. The the number of the fanchers is, is growing. We we have uh, we have a lot of uh, young fanchers now. So uh, I think altogether in Romania we are about let's say twelve to fifteen thousand fanchers. Uh, the only problem is that uh, the the country is split by the mountains, mm. and we cannot play all together. How can I say? So we are yeah. we are uh, divided in regions. Mm -hmm. There is also uh, yeah uh, in my region also. 
it's um, how can I say? Most of the ventures are focused on short and middle distance. We have another region who most of the ventures are focused on the long distance marathon. I don't know, one thousand kilometer plus. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, in my region, uh, we had some race. We have some races, short distance races with uh, more than twenty thousand pigeons. Wow. So yeah, but it's, it's very very good, and uh, also now uh, in the last years, the ventures uh, became very fanatic, and they they uh, invest a lot in uh, lofts, in pigeons, everything. It's uh, very easy to come uh, from Romania to Belgium or Holland to buy some pigeons, or I don't know. So a lot of uh, a lot of guys invested in this, and uh, the competition is very very. Yeah, it has to be. And and for you to do as well as you did against those numbers, um, it's no wonder that yeah, yeah. Belgians, Belgians I, I, have, you. I have some nice results there. Uh, also, I remember uh, in 2012 or 13, I think, um, was a young bar race. From, uh, about 20,000 pigeons that had the first 10 or 20. No, 21 first, uh, 20 uh, pigeons came together. I won the first 21 prize. That's incredible. That was, yeah, I was very excited. <laughs> I, uh, when I was trying to go up in the loft, I fell on the, on the stairs and I had a bad <laughs> injury on my knee. I was, oh, no. Uh, I didn't feel it. You know, it was the adrenaline in me. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw the shadows on the ground. And when I look up, I see all the all the pigeons and they all turn, the whole group turn and go direct on the on the on the stunics. That that was very 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 uh, nice feeling. Believe me, it was incredible for me. Oh, I bet that's that's why you couldn't I, feel it. you hurt yourself. Uh, you, you cannot see, but I have to. <laughs> yeah, good. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I'm, the best. I'm gonna send you the I'm gonna send you the a photo with that because I have um a big uh. uh I would say I put it on the wall. Yeah, a plaque. I I frame it. I frame it and I put it on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Nice so, feeling. <laughs> yeah, those are the best feelings. So that was against twenty thousand pigeons, top twenty-one places. And what was the distance again? Uh, uh around two hundred kilometers, I think. Yeah. Short distance. Yeah. Short distance. That that's and, uh, incredible. What is very <laughs> impressive is that the speed was very low. It was eleven hundred meters, something like that. Mm-hmm. Very nice, very nice. So you sent me a picture. Uh, it looked like uh, the bird's name was Oxygen, one of your basic kind of foundation birds. Yeah. Or, that was in Romania, Oxygen. right? Yeah, it's in Romania, of course. Oxygen it's, was, because he died uh, in 2022, uh, was my uh, basic breeder. He, his father was original from Jan van der Pass from Holland, and the mother was original from... Uh, Janssen brothers, mm -hmm. one of the last pigeons from Janssen brothers from 2006 was the mother. Uh, and uh, Oxygen, a uh, couple with different hands, proved to be a very, very good breed. Right. He's the father, the, the grandfather, the great grandfather to uh, several prize, uh, first prize winners, national champions, uh, ace pigeons, etc. Not only in my loft. Also to uh, to different other guys. That's incredible. So yeah, that was a super super pigeon for me. It's like you know everybody everybody has one pigeon, an icon pigeon, and they develop on that pigeon. Here, uh, Jan Hoymans have the 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 Hari. Right. Who can have the I don't know the Kleine Dirk, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the have the Queen L. Mm -hmm. So on and so on. Maybe yeah, I forgot some some famous pigeons, but yeah, uh, that was yours. Yeah, this is mine. Of course, uh, it's not in Belgium or Holland. It's back there, but uh, it was a special pigeon for me. Do you still I have children? Have... Yes, it was from 2007, and he was fertile uh, until 2018. He died in 2022. I still have 12 sons and daughters. And uh, in the last years, 
uh, I because I learned something from Jan Hoimas to try to keep the the substance to try try to keep the line mm -hmm. the blood, and I start to make some uh, uh, inbred mm -hmm. brothers, half brothers, you know, together to keep the the line there. So I have I don't know thirty inbreds out of him now. And then you can cross those out onto other books. Yeah, and I cross, I cross those with uh, some other pigeons that I have. Because also in the last years, I buy, I try to, to select some pigeons from, from different ranches from here, Belgium and Holland, because Belgium is very close, one hour, and I'm in Belgium now. Right. Uh, uh, to, I try to select from the good ones. I'm uh, also receiving the... Here in Holland, I'm receiving uh, three magazines. You know, if I can show you my my desk here, it's full of uh, full of uh, books. Yeah, you gotta so study, I right? Read, you gotta study. I, I read a lot, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, when you see some some good pigeons, you try to go there to to peel them. You try to to have some of those uh, some offsprings out of that pigeon. So, yeah, and uh, those new pigeons, I try to cross it back home with my my own line. Yeah, that's great. And that was this is the this is the story. So uh, when you were flying the the short and the middle distance there uh, in Romania, were was this young birds and old birds that you're flying? Do they separate the seasons, or is it something they? Fly? Yeah. Okay. The seasons are separated. And uh, what uh, type of see, what type of system were you doing back then? So the the all the the old pigeon season starts normally at on the last weekend of April and starts I uh, stops I think, I think uh, uh, on the first weekend of August something like that. Mm -hmm. And after that plus minus. The uh, first of second weekend of August starts the the, the young pigeon season. That's not too different so, than what we do here. You know, it's similar to what we do here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Belgium and Holland. Yeah, Belgium, especially Belgium, it's uh, something else, something special. You know, the program is different. The program is very, very nice. So you can you have a lot of opportunities. You can play whatever you want almost every week. You can choose whatever you want. Um, Holland is a little bit different, but yeah, uh, in Romania it's something like the German system. You know, uh, the the races are keep growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we reach the middle distance and we fly about eight times the middle distance races, and also together uh, doubling doubles with uh, long distance or uh, extreme long distance. I don't know. Right. So. Uh, yeah, with the with the young pigeons, there are about ten races there, mm -hmm. plus minus that depends. And uh, yeah, I was playing the the widowhood system there. Uh, all the pigeons must fly. Young birds too. No, no, I'm talking about the, all the, the old, old birds. pigeons. Okay. All birds. So uh, all the all the pigeons must uh, must race. So it's total widowhood. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. And with the with the young birds, uh, I was starting since 2011, I think, when I was first coming here in Belgium and tried to learn more about the the system. And I was starting to uh, play with the darkness system. So the pigeons keep the feathers. That's why a lot of people didn't believe me, and they keep uh, telling me that, uh, uh, yeah, I'm doing something wrong, but uh, illegal, let's say, you know, doping or something like that. But uh, I was a little bit one step ahead of them because I was using uh, a new system there, and of course, the pigeon with a full wing uh, can make a difference. It's a not big necessarily in the beginning. Yeah, not necessarily on the beginning of the season, but later on. Longer distance. When, yeah. Uh, yeah, but also later on when the, um, let's say September maybe, 
mm-hmm. when the um, molting is uh, you know getting uh, advanced some other pigeons lose the feathers and if you keep yours uh, in good uh, in good uh, condition you have a, a small event yeah exactly here in Belgium and Holland everybody's playing with the darkness system mm-hmm. to have the the pigeons in the best condition for uh, for racing right what were you uh doing with the young birds in Romania were you uh just flying to the perch um i was trying uh to play them also by the door how can you sliding door mm-hmm. on the nest of course but uh, to tell you honest the the main focus was was on the uh old pigeons mm-hmm. and after that uh I said, okay, I just keep them by uh, darkness and uh, play them normally, not on the boxes, not on the nest, nothing. I tried for two years, it was very good. But uh, because of the work, I just play them on the, on the, how can you say, on the purchase. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I didn't find the work on the purchase. Yeah. So you're using young birds to kind of get them prepared to be yearlings and old birds, and your focus was more on the old birds and winning in the short to middle distance. Yeah, I tried some tricks also with some boxes in the corners, with some uh, uh, dark uh, places also, you know. But um, the system, it's a little bit different because we have the youngsters a little bit later than here in Belgium and Holland. If the fences from Belgium and Holland are pairing the pigeons I think December. Yeah, we are uh, we are pairing the pigeons back home in uh, January or February. Mm-hmm. So um, they are not very very mature, you know. Mm-hmm. The first round, right. okay, some of them maybe, but not all of them. Right. So uh, um, I try also to breed earlier, but it's very difficult there because of the of the winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, for us in my region, because I'm very, very close to the mountains, 50 kilometers to the mountains or something, plus minus. Um, for us, not only me, all my 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 colleagues in, in my region, mm-hmm. yeah, it's six pigeons. The pigeons are flying. Six pigeons are inside. Yeah. So from March, from March until August, they are outside. Uh, until uh, October, sorry, plus minus. They are outside in the season, and after that, from October until March, uh, inside. Got it. Uh, sometimes after the last race with the old birds, they never go out. Mm-hmm. You know, they're right. We have a lot of problems with the uh, with the hawks. Yeah. What uh, with the old birds, you said total widowhood. Are you doing mostly loft flying? Did you do a lot of road training? What's the style there in Romania as far as training goes? Uh, everybody can do whatever they want, but I, I'm talking about myself and my my own system. Uh, yes, I was doing a lot of road uh, road training for short and middle distance. I think is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, here for me, it's the opposite. You know. <laughs> we are focused on 500 kilometer races, so we don't uh, train them as much as I did it back home. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, two or three times per week I was driving the, the pigeons. Uh, I had my own places, 40 kilometers and 70 kilometers. 70 kilometers, they are uh, flying about one hour. I was... I was waiting on the clock for my father to, I was driving and my father was waiting for them, for the pigeons. And I was waiting on the clock all the time to uh, the pigeons to come home. And uh, okay, the wind is very important, but uh, all the time, 70 kilometers, there was about 55, 57, 60 minutes, 62, 63, plus minus. So that was the the best time. Yeah. This is uh, the system that I was using back home. That's great. So um, was there any special feeding or products you were doing back then, or do you think it was just quality pigeons and training? Or I, I think it's a little bit of everything, you know. Mm. To have the puzzle complete, you need all the pieces. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, quality pigeons, uh, the fanship also, the time that you are 
uh, on the loft. Uh, the training of the pigeons, the health of the pigeons is very important also. Um, what else? Uh, of course, the training, uh, how, how you mentioned, uh, about the feeding. Yes, good quality food. Uh, back home, I, would, I was using food from uh, two or three companies. Bears, the Silalaga, Varobai, something like that. Mm. I was trying to make them some uh, mixing of my own, you know? Yeah, yeah. How I like it. And uh, yeah, everything. Having some products, of course, uh, for condition, for boosting, for everything. And did you. Here, Go here in uh, Belgium, Poland, it's a little bit different. Mm. Uh, I think it's much easier, much simple. In the beginning, it, it was very hard for me to understand, but uh, with the with the results, the results proved me that uh, it works also. And uh, were you feeding once a day, twice a day, back for the sprint and middle distance back then? Uh, twice a day, of course. Twice a day. Yeah. And the training was. Uh, uh, in the beginning, two times, and after that, only one time. Uh, in the summer, it's very hot, so I prefer in the evening not to train them. It is very hot not to train them because, yeah, it's also I don't like it to sit outside in the uh, in the sun. So also for them. But uh, yeah, two times, uh, two times per day is uh, got it. So. You get the call from Jan Hoymans, and he wants you to come join Team Ho Team Hoymans. And where does that begin? What ha what was that call like? Were you surprised? Hey, uh, the story is like this. Um, I told you I was coming to Belgium from 2010, two times per year, something like that. So in 2019, it was already nine years mm -hmm. uh, coming, coming, coming. I was in good uh, relations with uh, Dirk Donkers. Mm -hmm. from the super dunkers uh, yeah. and uh, uh, did knew my uh, my situation with the guy from Belgium we didn't like it that much and uh, I was uh, uh, almost uh, uh, preparing to leave back home and uh, Dirk is a very good friend with uh, Gregory my colleague from Team Hoymans Belgium from Mall mm -hmm. And uh, Gregory told him that Jan is looking for somebody, and you know the things came all together. And he said, "Okay, I I know somebody. Let's try." And Dirk told me that, uh, "Okay, it's a venture in Holland who who wants you." And I said, "No, I'm not interested." Okay. And after that, he kept telling me this, and said, "Look, it's a big name. Do you want to? Are you?" Okay. You want to have a meeting? If, no, no, no. Dick asked if I if he can give uh, Jan my, my phone number. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, give it. And Jan called me and uh, he asked me to to come to see the lofts here. In, I was living in Belgium. He asked me to come to see the, the lofts and everything. And uh, I didn't accept it at uh, the beginning, but after uh, an hour or something of talking, conversation, stuff like that, uh, he offered me this opportunity to work for the season here and after the season to go back home. And uh, I agree with that. And I'm here since 2009. <laughs> so what, what, uh, what job did he have for you there? Because you guys have a, a really nice team of people there. What, what did he want you to specialize? Um, in the beginning, uh, he asked me if I want to join the team because he was looking for somebody on the second lock in Belgium, in West London. And I said, okay. But uh, he had some problems finding a very good house with a nice garden in the back to make the lofts and everything. And time was passing. And uh, when he finally found the house, it was already very late here. We started to to prepare the season. He asked me, do you want to go there? I said, no, I don't really like to, to move. I don't like to move right. from different places. I know I, I I was just learning what is the uh, 
the bakery, where right. is the supermarket, where is that, where is the the haircutter and everything. And I said, okay, I prefer to stay here. And after that, he finds somebody else uh, for that place. And I was working for uh, the loft here in Holland, in Kerrville, uh, in the back of his garden, where Hari raced in the, mm -hmm. in the past. And uh, that was it. We, in the beginning, I was taking care of the racing hands, the youngsters, and the long-distance pigeons. After that, one of my colleagues uh, leave, and I was in charge of uh, racing cocks, racing hens, and youngsters, and the marathon was given to another colleague. And uh, this is uh, what I'm doing also now, cocks, yeah. hens, cocks, hens, and youngsters. But so the, focus is, uh, the focus is only on 500-kilometer uh, races. Mm -hmm. Short and middle distance, what I, uh, what I really like. Um, <laughs> we are not uh, very focused on that. So you're you're kind of having to uh, change. You had to ch kind of change some strategy to go for the longer distance. It was hard in the beginning to understand. I told you back home with the uh, road training, uh, using some um, uh, products for boost uh, for the last days, you know, to boost the condition and everything. Uh, here was almost the opposite. Nothing to do. Uh, we are waiting for the for the vet to come to tell us if the pigeons are healthy or not. But no training, not uh, a lot of products, and uh, I was uh, uh, how can I say? I was trying to adapt from short races, you know, early in the morning to wait the pigeons to prepare everything, everything, to 500 kilometers after I don't know eight nine hours of uh, of flying, mm -hmm. the middle of the day already. So yeah, but it's good that I'm learning something new. Yeah. yeah so of course. uh did you did you have to uh did it take some time, some trial and error to get up to speed on the different style or did you were you able to adapt quickly? How did that go? Was it a challenge? In the first year I was together with uh Abert, first colleague here. He was taking care of the cocks, I was taking care of the and yeah, I was uh, learning from, uh, you know, every day about the system and everything. I was very focused on the short distance, but he told me, relax, it's not, uh, it's not the important thing here. Um, and uh, the, long, uh, the long distance races came, you know, 500, five to 600 kilometers. And uh, there, also the pigeons are performing better. The Hoyman's pigeons are performing better on 500 kilometers than 200 kilometers, for sure. Mm -hmm. For 200 kilometers, you need some some other pigeons, sprint pigeons uh, with a lot of speed, of course, motivation and everything. These pigeons are not coming for 200, for sure. Uh, can you describe uh, what you look for in your pigeons when you're when you're handling them, sprint versus? 500 kilometers when you're looking for that distance, what's the difference in the, the way they feel, the, their physical traits? Um, okay, the body is a little bit different. Short distance pigeons are a little bit bigger, you know, stronger. Mm -hmm. The muscles, you can feel the muscles, you know. Uh, 500 kilometers pigeons, the, the Hoyman's pigeons that uh, I'm dealing every day now, okay, they are, the size is uh, medium to small maybe. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily very, very strong if you were handling uh, them in the beginning of the week. But uh, after the last days, after the last day before the basketing, okay, when you start to uh, to prepare the race, they are going to change in, 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 better, in better condition. But okay, they have to keep this condition for two nights in the basket. Right. This is also a... Um, uh, something different from short distance to to day one. And so, how many people are you flying against in your club and in the area there in Holland? And how many birds are we talking about for that five hundred kilometer type of race? I think in my club we are about thirty members. Uh, but uh, the 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 competition, it's uh, you know, 
it's on the on the club. Uh, we have the sector, uh, mm -hmm. the province or something like that. Right. Uh, uh, Abdeling, Abdeling is the the whole region. So I think the first races are a few thousand pigeons. Yeah. I've seen a thousand pigeons, something like that, maybe more. And when the day one is coming, the, the, the longest one is coming, yeah, maybe they can grow to, to 10,000 or something. Uh, Our so Abdeling, we are racing here in Abdeling number seven, I think is one of the smallest, if we are talking about the, the number of the pigeon. But yeah, this is it. Um, what's the routine with the birds when you're trying to get them ready for the longer distance, middle, you know, middle to longer distance versus the short to sprint? Is it a, is it a big change with your routine as far as exercise? You said you're not doing a lot of road training. You're doing more loft line. Yeah. Uh, I'm training them around the, the loft. I mean, uh, the 500 kilometer races are every two weeks. In between we have, uh, 350, 400 kilometer uh, races. And uh, the cocks are, uh, are racing every two weeks. In the beginning, they race every week. And when the, the, the long distance uh, races are there, they are flying only the long distance uh, races every two weeks. Two the, weeks. Hands are, the hands are racing also uh, some races in, the, in between. Uh, but the... Yeah, I, as I told you in the in the beginning, the short distance it's a lot of a lot of uh, uh, things to take care. I can say I don't know. Yeah. With the motivation and everything, uh, back home I was uh, preparing the pigeons. With a few weeks before the the first race, mm -hmm. I start uh, the the who system and everything to to learn the uh, the young cocks. The game, you know. Here it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, we are also starting the the widowhood before the season, but we take it very easy, uh, and we try to get them ready uh, after the fifth or sixth race, maybe when we are close to the, the first uh, day fund race, the first long distance race. Mm -hmm. before it take. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, totally different. The pigeons are more, uh, I told you, every two weeks, it's not a lot of work to do. Right. Uh, train them. And uh, about the products, nothing special, almost nothing special. Really. So law flying and, and good health, the vet comes and checks them out, and uh, a little bit of motivation Good but food, of course. Good food, right? But quality food, quality food. Right. If the food is uh, it's uh, good quality, they can take everything that they need out of the food. That's great. So, I know when you all are there working at serious business, you guys are trying to win on the national level. But do you all ever? I've I've been to the loft there and seen the garden and the whole area. Do you all ever get on that soccer field, the football field? And play <laughs> does 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 Hoyman's ever get you all out there to play some some football some soccer as we call it here in the states? Soccer, yeah, um, yeah. For the guys who who don't know, the the soccer field separates the the central breeding loft uh, to the racing uh, loft where I'm working. Uh, no, we never play there. Almost, yeah, never. Uh, from time to time, I take a ball and uh, exercise on the, <laughs> but uh, nothing, nothing serious. Okay, well, I was just curious because when I was there, I, I uh, enjoyed that you all had that. I liked it. It's a beautiful place, and so you'll just have to let. I'm coming back, in, you know, in June, so you'll have to let Yan know and Christian know that I, I want to play some football. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it. Let me see. Uh, here. Yeah, there. Yeah, I see. Uh, just a little lower. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. That's it. And that view so, where you're taking the picture that, that there's breeders up there. That's the top level where you have breeders, right? Yeah. And in the front uh, is the, the racing loft. Yeah. And that's, is that where you're operating from that loft there? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's incredible. 
it's an incredible place for sure. Yeah, it's pretty, it's very very nice. Everybody, uh, every visitor, you know, enjoys the 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 loft because it's yeah. not too simple. It's a huge loft with uh, uh, everything inside. Also, the pigeons are very nice. Yeah, the pigeons are super. I got to hold New Harry and and several of the other top racers that are there. Um, I purchased a hen I never, there, and I, I never handled Harry. I, Harry was uh, Harry died before I was uh, I was here. Yeah, and he you, you all have Harry um, in a on display there in the office. Yeah, yeah, in a in a glass uh, box. So what are some of your accomplishments now that you're doing this? You've been doing this since 2019 for Hoyman's because I saw one pigeon you have that uh, is that named after you, Silvio, and, and it looks yeah, like uh, it's a pretty a incredible pigeon, called, pigeon. It's a pigeon called Silvio. Uh, this pigeon won first prize on 500-kilometer race. Uh, but not only that, also the fourth and the... Uh, <clears throat> Fourth, five, six, and twelve and twenty on the national or MPO level, and at the end of the season, two thousand twenty-one, uh, he was twelve national uh, ace pigeon for long distance in Holland. Wow! Yeah, except that... for this one, we had also uh, another uh, I, I, me. Myself, the pigeons that uh, I'm in charge with, they won um, a few first prize on the NPO level, 500 kilometer races. We have Victor Hari with the uh, first on Chateru, 612 kilometers with uh, 13 minutes in, in the front. Wow. Um, we had a race from Vierzon when we were uh, when we won the first four prizes. With a pigeon called uh, Beauty Tony. Uh, yeah. Uh, another pigeon, also Baron Hari, was uh, five national ace pigeon long distance in 2022. So yeah, there are some good pigeons there. Yeah. Out of my out of my uh, racing uh, loss. And so. Um... Are, have you brought any of your pigeons from Romania to Team Hoymans to incorporate, or do you take any team no, pigeons no, no, back no, to no. Romania to add to yours? Do you do any of that? Uh, from Romania here, nothing. I asked Jan. I don't know. He he said no for the moment. Uh, maybe because he thinks they are only short and middle distance. I don't right, know. right. Maybe a different and style. The, uh, maybe, and he's focused on 500 kilometers. And... Uh, uh, from here to Romania, yes, I have five pigeons from Jan. Um, and the first pigeon that uh, he gave me, it's a hand from 2016. Uh, in the first year, all the youngsters, I keep them for uh, my breeding loft. And they, some of them proved to be good breeders because uh, one of uh, her daughters, is the mother of the national champion middle distance in Romania last year, and wow. also an Olympic pigeon, because uh, I'm not racing anymore back home, but I give the first two rounds to different guys, friends, or I don't know, some guys who want to buy to to race. So I also, this is a way of a selection for me, not mm -hmm. directly, but I can understand something. So, um, on the 2024 Olympiad, who was here in the Maastricht, Netherlands, a few months ago, I had two pigeons direct from my from my house, ringed by my father, raised by my father, right, and uh, uh, sorry, uh, and uh, raised to somebody else, right, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, one was Olympic for short distance, and another one for uh, middle distance. It's a friend of mine, a very good uh, fan uh, Mr. Kulda. He was in the uh, top with the pigeons, top condition, keep them all year long. And uh, yes, the, the national champion pigeon for uh, middle distance and Olympic pigeon, it's a grandson from uh, Hoymans pigeons. 
yeah. with uh, very very good prices, including first price on the three hundred and eighty kilometers races. And uh, is there a moment that you have had there in Holland racing with Hoymans that is similar to the moment moment you had in the in uh, Romania when you had the twenty one birds on the drop? Do you have a moment like that that you're really excited and and uh, no. Uh, the only moment, yeah, okay, when you win, the the first prize is very very nice, mm -hmm. but um, a very nice feeling uh, we had when we won the first four prizes on uh, 550 kilometers. There were two pigeons coming, and uh, a few meters, let's say, 100 meters in the back, another two. And when we saw that all, all four are by by, uh, by our lot, it was incredible. Yeah. And uh, at the end of the day, when you were the first prize, but not also the first, first, second, third, and fourth, it was super nice. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. And it's not 200 kilometers, it's 550. Too nice basketing. It's different. Yeah, it is. For sure. And they, you know, it takes a different kind of pigeon to be able to handle all that and still perform on race day, right? Yeah, 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 of course. Much different than maybe a sprint pigeon who's in for basket for one day and then, you know, comes home short at, you know, the two days plus the distance on top of that it takes a little bit. Yeah, 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 of course. And uh, yeah, the short distance uh, pigeons are uh, different than mm -hmm. I told you with the, with the boost and everything. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the pictures that you sent me of some of the people that you learned from. Uh, Leo Harriman's is one that you sent me a picture of. Yeah, I told you from 2011, I was keep coming here. Leo Harriman's, I think I was there in 2013 or something, first time. Very nice. Uh, his daughters all the time came there for translation. Oh, good. <laughs> He's not speaking uh, English. Yeah, Jan van der Pas was one of the first, and also I learned uh, things from him. Mm -hmm. I'm also now in contact with his daughter. Uh, uh, who else? Andreas Drapa from Germany. Uh, Sticker Donkers, of course, the Donkers. Uh, uh, van den Brande brothers. Uh, and now recently, I don't know, also spring guys, uh, Josh Coles, maybe, Luke Vervoort also, I'm visiting him a lot. I was uh, last week there. Uh, with Art Karlakens, of course. Right. We make some visit together because uh, he cannot drive uh, that much, so I'm helping him with his driving. And he goes to different fanciers, uh, for some interviews. How old is how old is he now? I don't know exactly. Almost eighty, I think. Yeah, my dad. Oh. When my dad would go over there to, to there to Belgium, he would go with Mike Gannis, and uh, when they would see Ad, they would play ping pong, and they had some very competitive ping pong games. Uh, my dad told me about. So. <clears throat> yeah. Pretty... Yeah. Also with the uh, Ladymon brothers, I'm. In good relations uh, not now from 2014 i think right I was there by by their uh, old location and uh yeah we had a lot of fun all the time i, I was there also with andre also with bert now they are uh, i think the most popular name that you hear here in, in holland belgium if you're talking about short and middle distance mm -hmm. The pigeons are very, very popular, very expensive, and but uh, for good reason. They won a lot of prizes. Right. Uh, what's uh, some of the lessons, teachings, advice that Jan Hoymans has given you that has really helped you grow as a pigeon fancier? To be honest, I learned a lot about the breeding system. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was talking to, to some friends uh, a few weeks ago about this, and uh, I told them that if I knew Jan Hoymans uh, maybe two, three years earlier, 
I can do the same system that he's making now. I can do it back home with my oxygen, with my pigeon oxygen. Uh, because uh, he has a very nice system to to breed, mm -hmm. especially with cock, and I like it very much. Uh, but uh, he asked, he told, uh, he teach me. I don't know. He, no, not to teach me. I can say. Uh, he told me to to be patient, to trust in the pigeon, the quality pigeons, uh, to keep it uh, low with uh, everything like uh, road training and uh, uh, a lot of products, as you asked me before. And he said, trust the pigeons, good food, quality pigeons, and the results uh, will come. And I didn't believe it in the beginning, but the the week by week. Uh, was right. Yeah. Uh, good prizes. Uh, winning good prizes. Yeah, your the breeding loft that you all have there in Holland is is a beautiful breeding loft, and you know you can just see all the attention to detail that goes into it, and um, you have a great team of people there that make it all work. It's an awesome setup and system. Yes. Uh, if you were starting over or maybe you're beginning again you're new to the sport what advice do you have for people who are new to coming into pigeons new or maybe they've been out of the sport for a while and they're coming back in how would you start over what do you think new people that are coming into this sport should do what are some tips you have for people that start out to be successful uh first of all i think it's very important to uh to create or to have a a base you know good pigeons if you don't have that you have to, to find some good pigeons but not to go everywhere you have to i don't know trust one or two people to uh, have some birds from there and start to racing mm -hmm. and keep only the best ones because if you go to i don't know a lot of people a lot of system a lot of ideas uh, i don't think it's very very good you have to keep it simple. This is my opinion. You have to keep it simple. Follow one or two uh, idols. How, how you say it? Icons. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, one or two really good, good flyers, good fanciers. Yeah. And uh, I think this is the, the easy and the correct way to to grow. Uh, and after that, uh, we spoke earlier with. Uh, if you have quality pigeons, you have to invest a lot of time, um, good food. Okay, time is also mean training and everything because you need uh, you need to offer them everything you know in order to win, especially for short and middle distance. Uh, so as as we spoke in the beginning, it's a puzzle. You're right. Good pigeons, the fan share, the time that fan shares give to the pigeons. Uh, quality food, training, healthy, and everything. Yeah, that's great advice. And, uh, I must, I hope, this is, this is, uh, this is what uh, I think is the best. And if I will go back, okay, if I go back tomorrow, back home, I, I have some basic pigeons there, and uh, I will restart the racing. But also, if you read a lot of these magazines, everybody's saying the same. Uh, so I think this is the most important. Yeah. What, uh, what are some of your goals and things that you all are working on there in, in team Hoyman's to, you know, do for the future? You guys are flying one lofts internationally in different places. Uh, you're having success. I think, uh, obviously success where you are there in Holland and Belgium. Do you, you have a loft in the UK now, right? Yeah, the loft in UK, it's uh, not from now, it's from several years. Okay. And so uh, you, all, you all are expanding all the time. What are the goals and, and things you all are working on for the future, you personally? Yeah, for me personally, is to <laughs> try to 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 have a um, very, very good uh, long-distance races. Not necessarily to win the first prize, but to have, uh, uh, I don't know, a lot of pigeons are top uh, top one hundred. It's very important. Every time we look, I'm looking for the top one hundred. 
You know, it's important. Mm-hmm. If you win, it's even better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you want the you're looking for those pigeons that are consistently up there. Yeah, of course. Because we've all seen pigeons that win a first prize, but they're not consistently at the top. You want those pigeons that are consistently getting up to you know. Yeah. Up in the pigeon. Yeah. Constant yeah. pigeons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, when you, the one thing I wanted to ask you, when you're loft flying, how long do you think they should be up flying? Do you have a time, or is it how long they want to, or do you keep yeah. them? One hour at least. Yeah. One hour at least. Uh, I'm. Um, I let them out to train, and uh, sometimes I use a flag or not, matter, but sometimes I use it. Um, and I, I clean the lofts, prepare everything, the food, the water, and uh, that was it. It's yeah. almost an hour. I let them with the Sputniks close, you know, mm-hmm. let them play a little bit outside. And after that, I open uh, the Sputniks and they they go inside. Eat, drink, and sleep. Yeah. So are you, when you're handling the youngsters and picking them to go into your loft, is that something you guys do as a team? Are you selecting what you kind of like for the loft? Or how does that process work when you're adding birds into the race or what you're going to race? Okay, I'm I'm in charge of the racing pigeons. Mm -hmm. Christian is there by the the breeders. But the the thing with the youngster is the, the first two rounds of youngsters are going to Belgium. Because the, the the program there, you know, the racing right. program starts earlier and finish later than here in Holland. And uh, they have a lot of uh, nice races, uh, national races, you know. I told you earlier, the, the playing in Belgium is something special. You have a lot of opportunities there. Right. You can play, you can play 100, 100K almost every week. Mm-hmm. They, start, they start the program uh, next week. I think, and they finish in, together with the round of Belgium. I think they are finishing in October, so you can play one hundred on two or two hundred kilometers almost every week as training or for money or for whatever. Yeah. So the the first round is going to my calling in Hall. Uh, the second round is going to uh, my calling in West Wander. and after that the third round. Uh, it's a little bit split be- uh, between Christian and uh, and myself. Uh, UK, yeah, one of races, something like that. Oh, good. Well, um, I receive about uh, 150, 200 cancer that they get. And then you start the process with them. Do you all, I guess, is there, uh, you let the vet kind of handle some of the health stuff when they're weaning and all that as far as vaccinating? How Do you all do anything like that? Uh, yeah, we vaccinate ourselves. We, the vet is coming also to just to check uh, the droppings and uh, handling the pigeons, looking at the, the throat and uh, everything. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Do you have any favorite pigeons that they're there now, maybe in the breeding loft or that you're personally racing? That is there any up and coming stars that you really like? <laughs> um. Yeah, I have a few favorites there. Uh, most of them are the ones that I raised. Mm-hmm. I told you before, the winners that now are in the breeding loft. But not only those ones, also a few extras. I like New Hari a lot. It's a very, very nice pigeon. Okay, now he's 10 years old, but uh, he's a very nice one. Yeah, he is. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to I, show you my favorites I, when you're going to come here. In, uh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait to see him. And uh, yeah. is Silvio in the breeding loft already? Is he Is he still yes. me? Okay, he has to be in the breeding no, loft. No, it's, it's in the breeding loft. Silvio's in the breeding loft. Victor Hardy's in the breeding loft. Baron Hardy. Uh, Beauty Tony. All the, the winners, uh, they are uh, coming from my loft. They're there. So are you, are you able to fly their children are you getting some of those this is a young hoima strategy you know uh, all those pigeons uh, they are winning in my loft they're going to the breeding loft uh, the winners from uh, gregory from mall are coming to the breeding loft the winners from uh, christoph from uh, west london are coming to the breeding loft the winners of christian are coming to the breeding loft and 
uh, we all receive youngsters from those winners, you know. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily from my own, but also from from my colleagues. Mm -hmm. And my colleagues receive youngsters from uh, my winners. And in so, the breeding loft, you guys are crossing all those birds together, I would guess. Uh, to tell you honest about the the breeding loft system and everything, the pairing and everything, I don't have much to do there. I it's not my uh, my business there. I I I just know a few pigeons from the breeders, okay, the most famous ones, but the others, most of them, I I don't know them. Yeah, I'm yeah. very focused. Uh, believe me, I have a I have a lot of uh, things on my uh, head with the with the racing pigeons. I have uh, about 150 racing pigeons. Yeah, it's a plus lot. The partners, plus the partners, plus 200 youngsters, plus around uh, 100 plus pigeons at my house. And I'm in, in the contact with my father every uh, every day, three times per day with everything. So it's a lot. When I when I show you here, this is uh, this is uh, what we what I do back home, and uh, yeah. Everything, everything what I do at home with, uh, with uh, yeah. coupling and everything to have uh, uh, to have the control about the, the pigeons uh, back home also. So it's enough for me back yeah. home and the rating from here it's enough. The breeders uh, from Hoymans, I don't know much much about them. Yeah, you're you're as they say, your plate is already full with everything you're already doing. And yeah. what yeah. what time are you starting in the morning with exercising the birds, and what time do you finish your day and get to go rest? Uh, okay, the the schedule is not uh, you know every day the same. For example, now before the season, uh, I was starting at eight. Now I'm coming a little bit earlier because the uh, the days are better. Mm -hmm. Okay, not now, not now, because this weekend the weather was very bad. Right. It's raining now outside, uh, and it's cold. It was about seven degrees. It's very cold. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, before and after the season, I'm working uh, from, let's say, eight to four, something like that, five plus minus. That depends uh, what I have to do and what I have to do. But when the season starts, okay, you have to uh, start – uh, train the pigeons, you know, earlier. So I start about uh, six o'clock because I have the cocks, I have the hens. After that, uh, the youngsters must go out, and after that, my colleague with uh, with uh, marathon pigeons, you know, he also have the yardlings for marathon, the Barcelona pigeons, maybe the his youngsters and something like that. And we have to to follow a program so all the pigeons to listen. Train, go inside, train, go inside. It's very busy in the sky mm -hmm. uh, every day. Yeah. So, yeah, I start around 6 o'clock. Um, I'm working uh, until uh, 1 o'clock, something like that. In the afternoon, I go home. I'm leaving uh, a few minutes away. And I'm coming uh, back again in the evening. So That's this great. is my uh, my program uh in the summertime and when does your race season begin in holland uh this year this is the season starts on 20 of 20 of april okay. so in uh yeah and we have the an official training with the club one week earlier on 13th so. that's great yeah. Well, is uh, is there anything that I haven't asked you yet or anything else you want to talk about while I've got you here? I don't know. You tell me. You know better. Yeah. You're I, in charge. Yeah, I've asked you. I've asked you a lot of questions. I know it's getting late there, and I appreciate you. Uh, That's I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you coming on, and uh, I can't wait to get there and come see you again, come see all you guys there at Team Hoyman's, and we'll have to do some, some more uh, – video and, how, was, how was the race yesterday by you uh we had our first race 150 miles uh 241 kilometers i think is the math on that but uh it was good we had a hard headwind uh so it was around 1100 yards a minute which is very slow uh okay. yeah it's uh it was a slow race and so we unfortunately here 
we don't have everybody on the, the live system to where we know right away what our results are. So we actually are going to find out the results tomorrow night in the club. And then uh, shortly after that, we'll get our combine and our federation results. But uh, the performance was good. Uh, we had uh, my wife has a team of pigeons and I have a team of pigeons and uh, we have an A race and a B race. So the A race is a five bird maximum and the B race is unlimited. You can put as many as you want. So she got the first bird in the A race and I got three on the drop in the B race. So we both were happy with our team and uh, it was all Cox that won. Uh, they did a little bit better with that headwind side wind. Uh, the hens came in pretty good, but it was kind of a, the day for the Cox to do a little bit better. But uh, how, how is it that it's warm now or I don't know? Uh, it's okay. yeah, it's it's uh, in the mornings. It's you're wearing a jacket or a sweatshirt in the afternoon. You're wearing a T-shirt like I am now. And uh, so it's kind of springtime where, you know, some <laughs> days it's headwinds, some days it's tailwinds or cross. And, uh, you know, we get all sorts of wind because where we are, I'm in Oklahoma in the United States, kind of central of the United States. We're kind of in a, in a tunnel system where uh, a lot of storms happen, a lot of tornadoes and a lot of wind and storms. And you, you know, we have the what to the West, we have the Colorado Rocky mountains, which brings down, yeah. you know, so we get so much different weather here in the springtime. You never know, but uh, some, some weeks will be tailwind. Some weeks will be headwind. Uh, you just don't know. And sometimes it can be calm. So it, it just kind of takes a, a different pigeon each week, you know. I understand. And uh, your focus is on short and middle distance or longer distance? So our races start at uh, 150 miles, which is 241 kilometers. And we go all the way to 600 miles, which is, uh, I don't know, 900 kilometers maybe? Yeah, almost. So we need a pigeon that can do from 150 miles to 600 miles. We want the pigeons to do the whole range. So I need pigeons that are somewhat similar to what you all are flying there with the new hairy build, red hairy, kind of looks like a size pigeon that we would awesome. fly. So it's kind of that medium size um, that usually does the best to do all the distance. Um, we have some bigger pigeons that do a little bit better on the short to, to middle distance. But uh, my preference is the medium-sized pigeon that can go, no matter what distance I send them, they can compete. At, and like you said, you want them to be high up on the sheet. So we don't have uh, but uh, 10 races, but we have the two A and B categories to where, you know, we get 20 races in total. So we don't have as many races as they do in Belgium to really specialize in one distance. So we kind of have to take what we can get, and uh, that way, you know, the pigeons have to be able to fly from that that range of distance. So it's uh, something like uh, you're looking for, uh, or, or we call it here all around pigeons. You know? Yeah, we're looking for all around pigeons here, and so oh. yeah, I'm I'm breeding pigeons. Uh, I made up uh, December, and uh, my first round is kind of uh, for me to loft here. But then you know, second, third round, I'm sending out to one lofts. Uh, sending out to customers who need youngsters for their own loft. And so, um, you know, we, we have to breed uh, a couple hundred pigeons every year just uh, to fit everything. And my partner is in Colorado, just about uh, 10 hours to the west of me, and he flies up there. And so we exchange youngsters and, and stuff like that as well. So we stay very busy here, and uh, we don't have quite the numbers of pigeons that you guys have there. And especially, it sounds like Romania is growing, and I wish we were growing here. The problem in the United States is we're very spread out. The lofts are all spread out across the country. The, the country is very big, of course. Yeah, so uh, it is moving more towards one lofts, but uh, I still am lucky enough to have a big enough uh, club combine federation, enough people that I can fly here, and it's very competitive, very, very tough competition here. Some of the top guys in the United States are in my federation. And uh, you start with uh, directly with uh, 150 miles. In old birds, we do. In young birds, it's 100 miles, so it's much shorter. Um, yeah. But we don't have that weekly 60-mile race that you get. You know, Belgium has that sprint race every week. We don't have that, so we have to drive a lot. We have to take our birds down the road ourselves. So uh, with the young birds, um, around June, I'll probably take them uh, 40, 50 miles. And then we have them, uh, we have to pull their ninth and 10th flight. And uh, I use lights so they get through the molt. And then once uh, September comes and races start, they have a full wing. 
and their body's full through the molt, I pull any of the middle tail feathers in June too that need to come out. So my pigeons, when September comes around, they're fully through the molt. They have a full wing and they're old enough to where I can mate them up, do wood hood or whatever I want. Some years I just let them stay together and, and just race them that way. Uh, some years I made them up to older cocks and hens who know my system. So it just depends yeah. on what I have time to do. But uh, it's a little different here is uh, old bird starts now in March and goes till uh, the end of May, early June. And then the focus immediately goes to young birds after that once it starts in September. Okay. Yeah. So that's why you're coming here in June. Yeah. My we, have small, we have a small break. Yeah, my season at Old Birds is over, and I have a small break, and uh, June's very hot here, so also it's nice to go to Belgium and the Netherlands because you all have better weather, so I get a little bit of vacation from the heat because it gets uh, it gets very hot, very humid here in the summer, so it's you, you can train early in the morning, you can law fly early, but once 10 o'clock hits, 11, 12 o'clock around lunchtime, it's already too warm to, to really get much out of it. And road training, you do once per week? Twice per week? Uh, usually uh, once or twice. So um, I like to go 30 to 40 miles short just to have them uh, go around the, the clock. So I take them north. I'll take them south. I'll take them east. I'll take them west oh, okay. around the clock. And what I want, what I believe, and this is what my dad taught me. My dad, uh, you know, has been flying for forever. And uh, he we, we want a pigeon that is going to think about where they are and orient quickly. So it's almost like when you loft fly them, you're exercising their uh, endurance, right? Their ability to stay up. But when you road train different directions, you start to exercise their homing ability. They have to think and use their their brain to figure out where they are and come home. And that, in my opinion, gives us an advantage uh, whenever they're released from the trailer. They think quickly on where they are and they break from the pack. So I try to... Yeah, huh? Not yeah. to come together with a with a big group, but yeah. to, to break find their own find their own way. And yeah, so that's that's what we've done here, and and uh, had a lot of success with it. But uh, yeah, old birds is fun. I, I I like young birds because all the races you get them on the day, and it's it's you're not waiting all day. But I I like longer distance uh, and old birds. I like the the 400, 500, 600 mile races. Uh, all the way up to 900 kilometers. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I think it really takes a certain kind of pigeon to do that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's but, interesting. Yeah. Also, there I have a friend. I think uh, in Chicago or so. Mm -hmm. But the same. They said uh, not many finches there. Yeah. And uh, the number is too too low in the competition. Like yeah. When I when I was a kid, you know, there was 200, 200 people in the Federation, 200 flyers in the Federation. Now there's maybe 50. Um, and uh, the club is much smaller than it used to be. We, you know, we used to have 30, 40 people in the club. Now we're, you know, we have around 20. And, you know, not every season people are flying. You know, some guys like young birds more, some guys like old birds more. So it changes. But the competition is still very tough. When you look at the national results, the a lot of the top lofts are in my area and, and in my state. So we have a lot of tough competition here. But okay. the, the game here is much moving more towards one lofts. And so I do a lot of one loft flying. Okay. Uh, only there or also in Europe or around the world? I haven't personally done a lot of international one loss yet, but I'm working on it. What I'm trying to do is to figure out of my bloodline what I consider my best one loft pairs that I send out. So I've I've had a lot of success this past year in, in certain crosses, and uh, I got a hint from you all uh, that Christian helped me pick out, and uh, I'm incorporating that into some of it's a hen. And so I'm incorporating some of that into what I'm doing and trying to figure out what kind of... Uh, crosses are going to be best for what parts of the country. And once I really am really solid here, then I'm going to start playing in the Pattaya and, and some of the uh, South Africa, some of those other places. Yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. Not yeah, only there, are, there, are few, there are a few big one of races around the world. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, in, in South Africa, one or two, Victoria Falls, I don't know, Africa Pro, Pattaya, Thailand Masters. Mm -hmm. Algarve, maybe. Have you gotten to go in person to these races? Only to Algarve. 
How was that? In the last two or three years. Very nice. Uh, last year, uh, uh, I met uh, Mike Ganas there. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Mm -hmm. In Algarve, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna send you some videos. A lot of people are coming to to watch the the final final yeah. race. I think last uh, year was about I don't know almost two thousand people there. It was full full of people. Yeah. Uh, the weather was very nice. It was very hot. But only there I was, not in uh, South Africa, not in uh, Thailand. Yeah, yeah, that uh, would be a fun part. I'm not, big, not, I'm not a big fan of one of races. Yeah, uh, I have some friends uh, also in Romania. They have their own uh, one of races, very important ones. Uh, some of them uh, uh, open a one of races in Spain. They do the winter season. You know, a one of races a winter. Mm -hmm. It's nice. They are busy all year long. Yeah. They have a summer season in in Romania, winter season in Spain. So um, it's it's nice. Uh, I'm not a big fan of one of races. I play from time to time. I send the team there. Yeah, I don't know, just for fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 focused on the on the championship. Yeah, you you have so much opportunity over there to race that you don't have to worry so much about one loft. It the one loft for me is another way to test the pigeons, and uh, one of my favorite things to do is to go in person and watch because you get to meet a lot of friends and see people that you wouldn't see otherwise. So that the social side of it's really good good in one lofts, and especially you know it helps if you're doing well, but. <clears throat> one lofts here in the States allows you to be somewhat similar to Belgium where you can fly year round. There are races that you can fly in the summer, in the spring, in the fall, in the winter. So you can enter yeah. one loft races in the States that you can almost fly year round and have action going. So that's some somewhat kind of our version of that here. But I, if I had to choose, I prefer flying them here. I like, I like being in control of the birds. I have to handle the pigeons uh, yourself. Yeah. Uh, somebody told me once that uh, uh, you take care of your own uh, pigeons like they are uh, crystal glasses, you know, and yeah. uh, handle them very carefully. Right, right. And uh, the others, one of races or the others, maybe they handle like they are uh, uh, paper cups, you know, or plastic. So it doesn't matter. They have that. That's why and, uh, here in the and, state. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, you don't have the control. You right. only can look on internet. You can look on internet. You still have the pigeons. I have uh, 10, I have 8, I have 6. They get lost. They are sick. They, I don't know. You never know that. 100%. So you're just looking on the, when the racing season starts. You're looking on internet to see how they're doing there. Exactly. Uh, back home, you can watch them every day. Yeah. And if you find a problem, you have to handle yourself to see what, what's happening. Yeah, that's why I always tell people you have to be selective on what races you enter. So what I do when I'm looking at a one loft is I look at the person that's handling the pigeons, the fancier. I look at them because if they have raced before and they've been very successful racing in a club, then I know that they're probably going to do good for the pigeons. So you, if you select the right handler that knows what he's, he or she is doing, um, you're much better off. So an example of that is a buddy of mine down in Texas, which is just south of me, about three hours, not far. He called me and said, hey, you're one of the birds you all sent uh, hurt his wing really bad. He's got a real bruised up wing. And I, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, you know pigeons just as good as me. You know, see, see how he does over the next couple of weeks. So he let the pigeon rehab uh, take his time. And eventually the pigeon started being able to fly around the loft again. And then eventually the pigeons started being able to compete. And on the final race, I sent you uh, the picture. That bird yeah. on the final race was ended up being right after the first drop. He trapped seventh and was right after that first drop. So when you get in a good race like that, where the, the, the handler's paying attention to the pigeons and their health and is able to look them over just like you would at home, that's the kind of one loft I like because I feel like they're getting that detail Versus, there are some races out there where there's so many pigeons they just can't they can't do that. Yeah. What I what I uh, what I was intending to tell you, Jeff. Um, yeah, it's different to handle. Uh, I don't know, 
50 pigeons, 80 pigeons, 100 pigeons every day to 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 watch them. But uh, take care of uh, two, three thousand pigeons on one of race. Yeah, there's too much. Too much. And you don't have the control. For example, uh, by by your pigeons, they are on the same boxes and everything. But three thousand pigeons, they are moving every every night almost. They change their, their own spots. So right. You, have a full control yeah over there this is my opinion maybe i don't know no maybe I, they can maybe they can have the control but uh, i don't think so no i i agree with you 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 have a a lot of factors into if your pigeons do well or not in a one loft that you're out of your control and you um that's why you see a lot of the top guys in one lofts <laughs> they'll put in a lot of pigeons into a one loft race to increase the odds uh, you know, uh, versus the small guy may only be able to afford to send two pigeons. Well, he's at a little bit of a disadvantage there. Uh, it only takes one pigeon to do well in a one loft, but the odds are that depends. Crazy. That depends how you how you see the situation and how you how you want to play it. Because if you play for the first place, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. But when you send a team of five, comparing with a team of twenty, for example, or even more, uh, you don't have to look. After the first prize, you have to look on the first 100, for example. Right. Normally, first 100 will, are in prizes, correct? Right. Prize money. Mm -hmm. So if you have uh, 20 on the final, you have a lot of chances to have three or four in the, in the first uh, 100. Right. So we can earn some money. But when you have five and you have only one or two in the first uh, 100, you know, and they are uh, not in the first, first ones, then the the prize is not so so uh, consistent. Right. Yeah. So this is a, I think this is a, a thing to look after to have as many uh, as many pigeons in the final race in the prize money. You know because if there are one hundred prize money and your pigeons came uh, 92, 95, 107, and two hundred and two hundred and thirty six thirty six, only two are winning some money right but you have more if you have more in the first hundred you can earn something right i think yeah the the biggest payouts obviously that first drop where you know it's if it's three or six or ten whatever it is they split that first drop but then after that there's positions that get paid and on the bigger races it is you know around 100 places so. if you look if you look uh, on the, the big uh, one of the races they are uh, paying good money until i don't know Place or something, mm -hmm. so you can earn something, yeah. And what's also good about one lofts here is a lot of the, the really well run one lofts. Uh, one of my buddies named Tony Cuevas, who's down in Texas, uh, they are doing different categories to where if it like if you if you were to take your sprint family and put it in his race, he has a sprint category, so you can get seven, eight, nine races out of it with the sprint, the middle distance, and then the longer middle distance. So up to about 350 miles, 400 miles, but you, he has a sprint category. So he gives out a sprint award that, uh, okay. you know, your pigeon can win the sprint and then you can, you know, so the one lofts are changing a little bit to where they, they, uh, historically have been about three to four races versus, uh, Nowadays, you're getting more races out of it, more categories. So race, for, race for races in the big final, I think. Yeah, that's how a lot of it's been historically. But now you're getting some of the sprint category in there, too. So if you have sprint birds, you can send them to a race like Tony's and compete in the sprint and the rest of it, too. So one lofts are adapting a little bit. They're, they're getting more uh, options for people. So if you are in a place in the United States where you don't have a club to fly in, you can still send your birds out and compete in the sprint, compete in the middle distance and the greater middle distance. And so it's growing in that way and it's, it's improving. Uh, and there's so many options in one lofts here in the United States that the guys that do well have to take good care of the birds uh, because word spreads fast. If there's problems, you know, people won't support those races. So it's growing, it's getting better. And the, the, the handlers are getting better and are adapting. So it's, it's definitely something that, is somewhat of a must here in the United States. You must play in it to be competitive and to enjoy it because the club scene is getting smaller. So, okay. But what can I say? Uh, if you're a big fan of the one of race, uh, uh, I wish you all the best in the future. 
Yeah. All the luck. Yeah. But I, I, you know, you can't, there isn't a really a one loft where you can fly a 900 kilometer, you know, there isn't really that type of race out there yet. And that's one of the distances I really like and, and have fun with. And so, yeah. 500 kilometers also. Yeah. 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 So, well, uh, I can't wait to see you in June and uh, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, where can people find you if they want to contact you? Uh, on the social media, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, there. Yeah, all of it is uh, under Seal of You and uh, you, Gladiano. Gladiano and uh, you uh, no website or anything like that, just Facebook? Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. No. All right, and people can uh, visit Team Hoyman's. Is there a Team Hoyman's website that you all have? Yeah, Hoyman's Pigeons, of course. Hoyman's Pigeons. Yeah, you have it. Uh, everything is here. There you go, Hoyman'sPigeons.com. Okay. Yeah. Well, people should get on there. They can probably see some pictures on the website of some of the pigeons you've flown that are on there too. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and Christian, I'll take care of this uh, visit and everything. Well, thank you again, Sylvia. I, I appreciate your time and coming on, and uh, we'll have to have you back on and let us get us an update on how the season goes for you once your season's over there with Team Hoyman. Uh, it's also my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah, this was an awesome. Uh, I, hope, I hope my English was uh, good enough. Perfect. It's my first uh, uh, interview like this. Uh, and yes, uh, if the season goes good, why not? We can talk again. Yeah, let's do it. And I will see you in June, my friend. Thank you again. No problem. Yeah. Have a nice day. Bye-bye and success in the, in the season. Thank you.